Welcome to Through the Bible in a Year with Pastor John. We invite you to join us at 1 Oakley Avenue in North Providence, Rhode Island. This podcast is presented to you by The Way Ministries, supported by listeners like you. For donations, live videos, podcasts, and more, please visit www.thewayministriesri.org. Thank you and have a great day. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Through the Bible in a Year with Pastor John. So glad you could join me today to get a portion of God's Word. Today, we're going to begin with day 174, June 22nd, Psalms 107 to 110. Handling Slander, Psalm 109, Overview. Book 5 begins with a vibrant note of thanksgiving for God's deliverance from danger, Psalm 107. David asks for God's help against his enemies, 108, then cries out for vindication against those who have slandered him, 109. But whether his enemies prosper or suffer swift punishment, David knows the future lies securely in the hands of God's righteous ruler who will triumph over all, 110. Psalm 107, God's redeemed, testifying. Psalm 108, God's remnant. Psalm 109, God's reproached, trusting. Psalm 110, God's ruler, triumphant, insight. Psalms of vengeance, Psalm 109, 1 to 31. Psalm 109 is just one of a number of impectory psalms in which the author asks God to judge his enemies. Others include 7, 35, 55, 58, 59, 69, 79, 137, and 139. In his indignation over sin, the psalmist cries out for God's swift and just punishment of evil. Insight. Psalm of a Savior. Psalm 110.1. Verse 1101 figures prominently in the New Testament as Jesus used it to refute the Pharisees. Assumptions about the Messiah. You'll find this verse quoted or referred to in Matthew 2244, Mark 1236, Luke 2042 to 43, Acts 2, 34 and 35, 1 Corinthians 1525, and Hebrews 113 and 10. 12 to 13. Psalm 107. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His faithful love endures forever. Has the Lord redeemed you? Then speak out. Tell others he has redeemed you from your enemies. For he has gathered the exiles from many lands, from east and west, from north and south. Some wandered in the wilderness, lost and homeless, hungry and thirsty. They nearly died. Lord, help, they cried in their trouble, and he rescued them from their distress. He led them straight to safety, to a city where they could live. Let them praise the Lord for his great love and for the wonderful things he has done for them. For he satisfies the thirsty and fills the hungry with good things. Some sat in darkness and deepest gloom, imprisoned in iron chains of misery. They rebelled against the words of God, scorning the counsel of the Most High. That is why he broke them with hard labor. They fell, and no one was there to help them. Lord, help, they cried in their trouble, and he saved them from their distress. He led them from the darkness and deepest gloom. He snapped their chains. Let them praise the Lord for his great love and for the wonderful things he has done for them. For he broke down their prison gates of bronze, he cut apart their bars of iron. Some were fools, they rebelled and suffered for their sins. They couldn't stand the thought of food, and they were knocking on death's door. Lord help, they cried in their trouble, and he saved them from their distress. He sent out his word and healed them, snatching them from the door of death. Let them praise the Lord for his great love and for the wonderful things he has done for them. Let them offer sacrifices of thanksgiving, and sing joyfully about his glorious acts. Some went off to sea in ships, plying the trade routes of the world. They too observed the Lord's power in action, his impressive works 
on the deepest seas. He spoke and the winds rose, stirring up the waves. Their ships were tossed to the heavens and plunged again to the depths. The sailors cringed in terror. They reeled and staggered like drunkards and were at their wit's end. Lord, help, they cried in their trouble, and he saved them from their distress. He calmed the storm to a whisper and stilled the waves. What a blessing was that stillness as he brought them safely into harbor. Let them praise the Lord for his great love and for the wonderful things he has done for them. Let them exalt him publicly before the congregation and before the leaders of the nation. He changes rivers into deserts and springs of water into dry, thirsty land. He turns the fruitful land into salty wastelands because of the wickedness of those who live there. But he also turns deserts into pools of water, the dry land into springs of water. He brings the hungry to settle there and to build their cities. They sow their fields, plant their vineyards, and harvest their bumper crops. How he blessed them. They raise large families there, and their herds of livestock increase. When they decrease in number and become impoverished through oppression, trouble, and sorrow, the Lord pours contempt on their princes, causing them to wander in trackless wastelands. But he rescues the poor from trouble and increases their family like flocks of sheep. The godly will see these things and be glad, while the wicked are struck silent. Those who are wise will take all this to heart. They will see in our history the faithful love of the Lord. Psalm 108 a song, a psalm of David. My heart is confident in you, O God. No wonder I can sing your praises with all my heart. Wake up, lair, and hop. I will wake the dawn with my song. I will thank you, Lord, among all the people. I will sing your praises among the nations. For your unfailing love is higher than the heavens. Your faithfulness reaches to the clouds. Be exalted, O God, above the highest heavens. May your glory shine over all the earth. Now rescue your beloved people. Answer and save us by your power. God has promised this by his holiness. I will divide up Shechem with joy. I will measure out the valley of Succoth. Gilead is mine and Manasseh too. Ephraim, my helmet, will produce my warriors. And Judah, my scepter, will produce my kings. But Moab, my wash basin will become my servant, and I will wipe my feet on Edom and shout in triumph over Philistia. Who will bring me into the fortified city? Who will bring me victory over Edom? Have you rejected us, O God? Will you no longer march with our armies? Oh, please help us against our enemies, for all human help is useless. With God's help, we will do mighty things, for he will trample down our foes. Psalm 109. For the choir director, a psalm of David. O oh God, whom I praise, don't stand silent and aloof, while the wicked slander me and tell lies about me. They surround me with hateful words and fight against me for no reason. I love them but they try to destroy me with accusations even as I'm praying for them. They repay evil for good and hatred for my love. They say, get an evil person to turn against him. Send an accuser to bring him to trial. When his case comes up for judgment, let him be pronounced guilty. Count his prayers as sins. Let his years be few. Let someone else take his position. May his children become fatherless, and his wife a widow. May his children wander as beggars, and be driven from their ruined homes. May creditors seize his entire estate, and strangers take all he has earned. Let no one be kind to him. Let no one pity his fatherless children. May all his offspring die. May his family name be blotted out in the next generation. May the Lord never forget the sins of his fathers. May his mother's sins never be erased from the record. May the Lord always remember these sins 
and may his name disappear from human memory. For he refused all kindness to others. He persecuted the poor and needy, and he hounded the brokenhearted to death. He loved to curse others. Now you curse him. He never blessed others. Now don't you bless him. Cursing is as natural to him as his clothing, or the water he drinks, or the rich food he eats. Now may his curses return and cling to him like clothing. May they be tied around him like a belt. May those curses become the Lord's punishment for my accusers who speak evil of me. But deal well with me, O sovereign Lord, for the sake of your own reputation. Rescue me because you are so faithful and good. For I am poor and needy, and my heart is full of pain. I am fading like a shadow at dusk. I am brushed off like a locust. My knees are weak from fasting, and I am skin and bones. I am a joke to people everywhere. When they see me, they shake their heads in scorn. Help me, O Lord, my God. Save me because of your unfailing love. Let them see that this is your doing, that you yourself have done it, Lord. Let them curse me if they like. But you will bless me. When they attack me, they will be disgraced. But I, your servant, will go right on rejoicing. May my accusers be clothed with disgrace. May their humiliation cover them like a cloak. But I will give repeated thanks to the Lord, praising him to everyone. For he stands beside the needy, ready to save them from those who condemn them. Psalm 110, a psalm of David. The Lord said to my Lord, Sit in the place of honor at my right hand until I humble your enemies, making them a footstool under your feet. The Lord will extend your powerful kingdom from Jerusalem. You will rule over your enemies. When you go to war, your people will serve you willingly. You are arrayed in holy garments, and your strength will be renewed each day like the morning dew. The Lord has taken an oath and will not break his vow. You are a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. The Lord stands at your right hand to protect you. He will strike down many kings when his anger erupts. He will punish the nations and fill their lands with corpses. He will shatter heads over the whole earth. But he himself will be refreshed from brooks along the way. He will be victorious. My Daily Walk Character assassination. It's a malady you won't find in any medical text. And if it happens to you, chances are you won't end up in a hospital emergency room. But the pain is still acute, the damage severe, the recovery slow, the scars difficult to remove. How do you react when you've been unjustly accused and maliciously slandered? David responded with some of the strongest words found in Scripture, Psalm 109, 6-20. In fact, these denunciations sound so uncharacteristic of the sweet singer of Israel that some commentators have suggested David's accuser, rather than David, is the one being quoted. But the question remains, how do you handle a slanderous attack? David's advice would be this, seek God's help and let him vindicate you. Psalm 109, 26-27, let your enemies bring shame upon their own heads rather than trying to do it yourself. Verse 29, continue to praise the Lord throughout the ordeal. Verse 30, no greater injury can be inflicted upon someone than to wound his or her reputation. That is so true, my brothers and sisters. That's all for today, my friends. It was great reading along with you. Have a great day, and God bless, and I will see you tomorrow. Lord willing, peace.